All right, man, so peace. So now this this was a great segment that was on the CBS Morning News about Mrs. Henrietta Lacks. Uh, she was very integral in a lot of the medical and scientific advancements that have been made in the 20th century due to the uh, the peculiar way in which her cells constantly multiplied, even though she you know she, even though she's been dead for what almost 70 years. All right, so they're going to go through this story. Oprah's on the show. Uh, she produced the film. And uh, as they talk about the story, I'm going to chime in here and there. I just wanted to include this little preamble where they introduce Oprah because you're going to you're going to notice Oprah's going to do a, a couple of hand signs where she's going to put her hands in a downward arrow in between her legs. That's a uh, that's one of those, you know, Kabbalah occult signs where she's trying to uh, channel certain energies for the mother goddess. All right. So watch what she does. She's going to look at the camera and then she's going to purposefully fold her hands down into a downward pointing arrow between her legs. Later on in Oprah, hot off the presses, Oprah just pulled up and just ran and said, Hi. Him, Hello, Oprah. Yes. Yes. yes, I heard you talking so, about me in a taxi. When's the last time you took one? Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 you're in a taxi, uh, sir. <laughs> Tom like Z's talking smack, huh? Girl. Early night. Good morning. 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 The white woman told Oprah, you know, the movie was so good, I cried. Oprah said, oh, yeah, I want to know where you cried. In other words, you're full of shit. <laughs> you know, what I think is interesting, that it's very rare to hear Oprah say she was, she just didn't want to embarrass herself, because when do you ever do that? And that you were intimidated by this role. I was mostly but, intimidated. But you can explain. You see what she just did? She looked in the camera to make sure that she that she knew what camera she was on, and then she opened her legs and put her hands down in between her legs. She's going to do it again later on. Explain that later. Oh, please. Charlie already didn't hit that. Charlie didn't hit that six ways to Sunday. All right. Charlie didn't hit up all three of these broads. But she's about to do it again. You're watching CBS this morning. With Oprah. You see that? She looked in the camera and then she did it again. That's like a downward pointing, uh, I believe it's called like the Spear of Longinus or something along those lines. It's like some priory, some priory of Zion hand sign. Oprah's deep into the Kabbalah and the uh, that Jewish mysticism, all that nonsense. But she's the MK Ultra asset anyway. Oprah Winfrey and Charlie Rose will be back right What's after the, the leg. Break. Charlie. <laughs> yeah, they always all up on Charlie. Well, <laughs> Council of Foreign Relations, Charlie. Charlie didn't hit all three of them broads. Now, here's the actor Danny Glover uh, doing the same hand sign. I just wanted to include this. So that people understand what I was getting at by highlighting Oprah's hand sign. Right? These are little hand signs that they do in the entertainment industry to signify to those in the know that they are channeling the energies, that they are uh that they are part of the program, that they're executing the game plan. All right. Danny Glover is a uh, so called Marxist, meaning he's a uh he's a pawn of the super liberal aspect of the uh you know the international bankers, the communists, and all the and all those other things. All right, that's what he's down with. That's why he's always that's why he's always trying to promote who, uh, Hugo Chavez. All right, so but that's how they get down. And it's, and like I said, that also goes back to the God Pan, the God of bisexuality. That's why you will see Danny Glover uh, always kissing men on the lips. All right, <laughs> like a uh, like uh, he was making out with what's his name? What's this guy's name from the Caribbean? The, uh, Harry Belafonte. Yeah. Those guys, they're all down with the program. Notice Harry Belafonte was with uh, Martin Luther King with the with the communist movement known as the Civil Rights Movement. All right. So I just wanted to throw that in there. All right. So now we're back with the Henrietta Lacks story. Uh, this story is very, very important. And uh, like I said, as they go through it, I'm going to chime in with certain things in, re in regards to the uh, medical experimentation practices used in America in the 20th century. And uh, how they systematically tested on so-called black people throughout the, 19th, throughout the 18th, 19th, and 20th century to make most of their gains and advances in medicine and science. All right, so let's see what they have to say about this story. The name Henrietta 
Cadillac may not be well known, but her impact on the medical community is long lasting. Lax was a mother of five, diagnosed with cervical cancer. Doctors took her cancer cells without permission before she died. The cells became known as HELOT. They are the basis for advances in modern medicine like the polio vaccine, chemotherapy, and in vitro fertilization. Now, to be quite honest with you, if I be a betting man, uh, not only did they take her her uh, cells without her permission, they probably injected the, the uh, cancerous cells into her in the first place. All right. I'm not saying that they did, just my opinion. All right. Allegedly. Okay. But it would not shock me at all. And the new HBO film, The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks, will share her story. It is based on Rebecca Skloot's best-selling non-fiction book of the same name. Now, in the film, Oprah as in Winfrey, there's only one, plays Lax's daughter, Deborah, who goes on a mission to learn about her mother. Rose Byrne is a reporter, Rebecca Skloot, and Hamilton star Renee Elise Goldsberry portrays Henrietta Lacks. Now, my brothers are all upset because everybody come around make money off our mama sales, but I don't care nothing about that. Is there, is there a worse actor on the planet than Oprah? Every movie she's in, she plays a, she plays a damn slave. The movie takes place in like the 1970s or 80s and she's still playing a slave. Come on, man. What I care about is knowing about my sister and knowing about my mother. And you gotta promise me, no matter what, you ain't gonna lie and you ain't gonna keep nothing from me. I promise. You can tell this movie is really about the love story between a liberal uh, black woman and a liberal white woman. That's really what this is going to be about. They're going to band together and find justice for Henrietta. You better get yourself ready, girl, because you have no idea what you're getting yourself into. <laughs> <laughs> no idea what you're getting yourself into. Say that again. Yeah, I know what she's getting herself into, a, a very poorly acted movie. Say that again, Oprah. You got no idea what you're getting yourself into. Welcome 60 Minutes new special contributor, that's Oprah, along with Rose Byrne, Renee Elise Goldsberry, to Studio 57. Welcome back to the table. This is the thing, Oprah, even I, who know you so well, I lost all the openness when I was watching you, and I didn't think that that was possible. Oh, that's good. <laughs> you can lose the openness, that is good. But everybody who has seen that is saying that. It's not just me. But it's interesting to hear you say that you were intimidated. I remember when you took the role, you said, I just don't want to embarrass myself. I did want to Word. embarrass myself, but I uh, surrendered to the hands of George Wolfe, the one and only yeah. George Wolfe director yeah. and director George Wolfe, and uh, uh, being able to work with these wonderful women. Although we never had a I scene know, together. I know, which makes it so beautiful when She's I playing your it. mother. This is what I love on the cover of that. She's my mama. <laughs> yeah. And I'm so proud. <laughs> Just get to the goddamn movie, please. You know, I'd never heard of the story after all those years working in Baltimore and have carried it since 2010. Since she was based in Baltimore. Since yeah. she was born and raised and died in Baltimore. And that's, that's erroneous. So already Oprah's full of shit. You know, I, I became aware of this story a, a couple years ago. I think a brother forwarded this story, this, this story to me. Uh, a couple of years ago so when i saw that they made a movie about her life that was uh that kind of amazed me because i had just heard about it maybe two or three years ago and uh first off she wasn't born and raised in baltimore she was born and raised predominantly in virginia and rebecca scoot as we all know the author of the immortal life of henrietta lex the book uh brought the story to light so Thank you, Rebecca Skloot, for yes, doing that yeah. and making this possible for all of us. Let's yeah. underline the greatness of her in terms of what she contributed. And yes. And I mean, other, yeah. Yes. Uh, her cells, which are still duplicating as we speak, mm -hmm. replicating as we speak, uh, helped contribute to the polio vaccine, to the AIDS cocktail, to... The AIDS cocktail. Well, first off, AIDS was a genetically uh, created or... A scientifically created disease anyway so i don't understand how 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 her cells were used in the aids cocktail that's used to fight the so-called aids virus when they already have a, they already know what cures the aids virus because they created it all right not to digress but aids aids was uh formally created by a a uh, scientist named robert gallo all right you can look that up 
Robert Gallo created the AIDS virus in the early 70s. This was after a long series of trials in the creation of the AIDS virus going back to the late 1800s. All right. Rockefeller Instit the Rockefeller Institute and uh, a lot of other high level agencies were involved with the creation of the AIDS virus for, for population control. It was just formally uh, solidified as a as a viral agent in the early 1970s by a doctor named Robert Gallo. Practically every piece of medicine that now is in existence has some form of HeLa. HeLa has contributed to it. Talk about that, Renee. Yeah, they have some form of HeLa because all of these doctors took her cells and they, uh, they engaged in experiments on people without their permission and engaged in, on experiments with her, if I be a betting man, without her permission. Because you were Henrietta Lacks. I was Henrietta Her contribution is amazing. The story that most of us... Allegedly. Most of us have never heard of. And it's a, it's a story that we can get so caught up in the science of it because it's still so controversial. But I love to talk about the beauty of uh, just a woman who was so young and seemingly so disenfranchised and the, the, the impact that she had. And especially when you look at her family today and see um, all the things that they're, they continue to contribute two generations, mm -hmm. three generations later. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's just really an empowering story that should inspire all of us. I think it's a very unfortunate story. I think it's a story that was very indicative of the time when uh, so-called black people were, were having experiments done on them without their knowledge, without their permission. All right, Henrietta, Henrietta Lacks went to the doctor. She was complaining about pains in her abdomen. She thought she was pregnant. And, uh, you know, they took a biopsy. I believe her doctor's name was Howard Jones. And uh, came back and they, and they told her that she had cancer. All right. Now, Howard Jones went on to become a very, very prominent doctor. He was one of the first doctors to uh, to do uh, sexual reassignment surgeries. All right. On children. Uh, he was one of the doctors that they used to promote the transgenderism from back in the 60s. And they tried to use that to prove that uh, that uh, gender is a learned behavior. All right. So there's a lot of different aspects to this story. A lot of these doctors that became famous off of the use of her cells were used, were uh, became prominent through other diabolical means. All right, but we'll we'll touch on that a little later. Us to tell our stories to our children. Mm -hmm. I I thought the same thing. And Rose, you play Rebecca Sloot, mm -hmm. yeah. the author, the journalist, yeah. who her dogged pursuit yeah. to tell this story, to form this friendship with Deborah to help her discover her mother. It's such a beautiful story. What did you learn? I told you this story was all it's going to be, all it's going to concentrate on was a liberal white woman coming together with a liberal black woman and they, <laughs> they hold hands and they solve all these issues and solve all these problems. Bunch of bullshit. Instead of getting to the real nitty gritty. In meeting with Rebecca. Rebecca's really a force of nature. She's incredibly smart, but incredibly determined. And if she has her mind on something, she will get it. And uh, she's, an imp she's a very impressive person. And I got to spend quite a bit of time with her. She's very candid with yeah, me. Yeah, the first thing you There we are. Yeah, um, the first thing you and, mean, yeah. you know, she, she's very candid and shared a lot of stuff with me that's not in the book about her own, you know, personal life. Rose, I love how Nora says form this friendship with Deborah because Deborah was a little crazy. <laughs> yeah, and you guys had a real you know, bumpy they... journey to get to get Get to a place where which is understandable she was paranoid she'd been you know yeah, abused like 14 you know, different yeah. medications yeah, yeah. yeah it's interesting and because that, there were a couple of times when we were really sitting together and being friendly and george was no 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 too friendly too friendly yeah. <laughs> so this is why I'm, I'm not interested in a lot of these uh these these uh biographical films because they take the the truth and the crux of the story and they turn it into some bullshit they should have been concentrating on henrietta lacks and uh, what was done to her and how she's been used and how the majority of, of uh, scientific experiments and medical experiments in the 20th century, uh, a lot, most of the advances were made from the unwitting and unwilling participation of so-called black people. All right. You can go back all the way to the 1800s. Uh, the father of modern gynecology, his name was... Uh, uh, was it J. Martin, J. Marion Sims? All right, he was a gynecologist. He's called the father of gynecology. All right, now he what he did in the 1800s, he took black women who were slaves, so-called black women, and he performed gyne uh, gynecological experiments on them 
without anesthesia. He would perform vaginal uh, surgeries on them without anesthesia. All right. That's what he used to do. Uh, Thomas Jefferson injected uh, smallpox into uh, most of the most of the so-called blacks that were on his plantation. All right. As a trial, as a test to see uh, how smallpox could be cured. All right. There was a guy named uh, Cornelius Rhodes who worked with the Rockefeller Institute. Cornelius Rhodes, he went down to Puerto Rico and his job down there was to uh, to test out cancer treatments on on patients down there in Puerto Rico. But what he was doing was he was purposefully injecting cancer into the Puerto Ricans down there. And he got so frustrated right one night when his car got broken into or his vehicle, something like he got robbed in some way. So he went and he wrote a letter. He was writing a letter to one of his friends in New York saying that he had killed eight people by injecting cancer into him. And somebody else found the letter and spread it around and he got in big trouble. Don't you know they investigated him and they fully exonerated him? But when they did a they, they did a posthumous investigation years later, and even the investigators confessed that there were other letters that he wrote that they found that, that were even worse than that first letter. All right. And Cornelius Rhodes, he had claimed at the time of the investigation that that uh, that he was just joking. But they said that they found other letters uh, to the same effect, that he was purposefully injecting cancerous cells into the Puerto Ricans down there to kill him. And he was saying that they were the worst uh, people on the planet and all this other nonsense. All right. So the point being, most of the scientific and medical advancement that, that have been made in this society have been made un unwillingly by testing on so-called blacks. They had experiments in, during, sla during slavery also where they would put uh, blacks in a pit and they would pour boiling hot water on them to see how fast their skin would peel. All right. So do I believe that Henrietta Lacks was injected with cancer? It's a high probability in my mind. Yeah, I do. All right. There was another doctor named um, some Klingman or Kligsman. Start with a KL. This guy was involved with testing. Uh, he, he did a lot of tests on black, uh, black prisoners in a prison up there in Philadelphia. I can't remember the name of the prison. Holmesburg or, or Holesburg, something like that. You brothers could look it up. All right. He was injecting them with, uh, he was injecting them with serums that were causing their skin to break out and, and, uh, something called super acne. All right. All type of growths and, uh, and, uh, uh, <laughs> Just craziness was growing on their skin because of these tests that they were unwillingly participating in. All right. You brothers, y'all can get a book called uh, Medical Apartheid by Harriet Washington. It, it'll, it'll give you a list of a lot of the experiments that were done. But when you look at what was done to Henrietta Lacks, man, to me, in my honest opinion, she was probably injected with with cancer uh, into her uterus. And, and because at first, you know, she thought that she was just pregnant. Then she came back and they and they said that she had it uh, that she had cancer. So I mean I don't know. I'm not saying that it necessarily was the case, but it wouldn't shock me at all. Looking at the history of the medical field in America in the uh, especially in the early 20th century. There's a great scene where she grabs you, Deborah grabs you, and throws you up against the wall, and you tell her to shut the bleep up. Yeah. Oprah, has anybody ever said that to you? I got no. a kick out of that scene. No one's ever said that to me in real life, yeah. shut the bleep up. Yeah. And, you know, when you get told shut, that's what I was up. wondering. There's a moment where you just go. Somebody has told your ass to shut the fuck up. Like, stop acting like you such a big boss. Like, you was a hoe back in the 60s. Like, get out of here. Nobody ever told you to shut the F up. Please. You know, somebody said a white man going to call your phone up th th that very day and tell you to shut the F up. One of your handlers. That bullshit with that fake, <laughs> that fake big boss woman bullshit. Nobody's ever told me to shut the F up. Everybody's been told that in their life at some at some point in time. Cut the bullshit out, Oprah. Uh, well, hey, man. <laughs> Because yeah. number one, you were so convincing when you said it. Yeah. Okay. And I thought, God, I wonder how she's taking that we in. We did that many yeah. times. It was a long day. It was a long day. Was a long long day. day. We long shut day. the bleep up all day long. Yeah. <laughs> we did. No, yeah. George was a, he was a great leader. We all kind of lent on him. Yeah. Well, well, yes, George. Yeah. George I'm going to just ask yeah. what he added yeah. to this. Yeah. 
I mean, he's he's a genius. He's a national treasure. He's yeah. you know a Broadway, a Tony Award winning iconic director and writer. And so it's actually the first time I got to work with him. I heard a quote that you said that Audrey McDonald told you that you you would become a better actor from yes. Working. Audrey McDonald and I had done a table read for Night Mother with a George Wolf and Scott Sanders that never came to be. But uh, George, uh, Audrey McDonald said to me, "If you ever get a chance in life." to be directed by George Wolfe. Take it, because he will change you as a person and as, as an actress. Well, because you I weren't was, even going to be in this yeah, movie. I didn't want because to you it. wanted to work with George. Yeah, I, wanted, I did this because I wanted to work with George, and I did this because when I first heard the tapes that Rebecca Skloot, the author of the book, had of Deborah, she had hours and hours and hours of tapes of Deborah. Deborah actually wanted me to play her. <laughs> oh my gosh, Why? I just yeah. got the chills. Deborah, oh well, because she watched the Oprah show. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. But then you don't open today. <laughs> so I can hear her voice saying that, yeah. and I can hear her saying that she uh -huh. wished that I would, but first she wanted me to play her mother, and then realized I was too old to play her mother, and that uh -huh. would be better playing her. So and it's prophetic. <laughs> yes, it feels prophetic, yeah. and I feel like, you know, this coming into fruition is a part of her dream. Yes. <laughs> and we always felt on set, anytime yeah. something would go right or wrong. Henrietta was there. Henrietta! Yeah. Henrietta! <laughs> Yeah, more more uh, worship of of uh, spirits. That's what they do in Hollywood. They worship ghosts and spirits. All right, they want to attribute everything. Most of them are number a bunch of damn necromancers. Henrietta, yes. Thinking about this, telling the story too is the immense contribution that Henrietta Lacks has made to science that nobody knew about. But it's also a story of abuse. Yes. Mm -hmm. The abuse of her and her contribution, not only taking her cells without her knowledge, which has now been changed, you have to yeah. get permission, but also then not even not even acknowledging her. They tried to change her name, call her Helen Lane. Yes. It was Gila. Because they didn't want anybody to know that those were her cells and then wanted to be identified as this African-American woman. I mean, I think, you think of all the people who have benefited from her cells yes. um, through, you know, medical science, mm -hmm. a lot of them not knowing that this was an African-American woman's mm -hmm. contribution that, that, you know, led to their own personal healing. So. Mm -hmm. We feel it's a victory to get the story made. Mm -hmm. Are you acting more and enjoying it more? It seems like I am. <laughs> you acting right now. You you acting like you can act. <laughs> and, and, you know, it wasn't an intentional thing, Charlie. I, you know, this I I'd held this uh, as a producer and had thought of other people who should have played the role and it is because of George and Lynn Amato from HBO who said you need to do it and then when I heard the tapes of Deborah I said okay I'll do it but I it was I was very much intimidated because everyone has done more films than I have so I'm not accustomed to stepping into a situation where you know, I'm the person on in, in, in the room who is the least experienced. Was she any good, Rose? <laughs> <laughs> I would love, I would love to be on the set with her. Actually. No, we had a, she was fantastic. And all, and, and Stop lying. And very, we had a lot of late night scenes. We did have a lot of late night scenes. Like, and, um, yeah, I'm sure y'all did. Oprah, Oprah's a pansexual. I'm sure y'all did have a lot of late night scenes. Um, and not, you know, very conserving your energy and yes. meditative about the whole process and very, you know, which I totally respect. You had a huge undertaking physically. And Rose, Ro Rose would come in in the morning because she'd been up with the baby all night. And so oh, that's right. <laughs> <moving to laughs> the boy. All right. This is starting to go a little too much into girl talk. But the point being is that um, Henrietta Lacks, they took her cells and they, you know, in my honest opinion, to take it to the next level, the, the doctors most likely injected her with the cancer. All right. Like I said, the same guy who was treating her, Howard T. Jones, he went on to become one of the former one of the foremost physicians involved with sexual reassignment surgery. So he, he point being, he's not scared to push the envelope. All right. A lot of experiments were being done on people during that time period without their uh, permission and. Uh, Particularly on so-called black people, you know. Everybody knows about the, the Tuskegee experiments. Uh, like I said, especially in the uh, prison system, there were experiments being done on black prisoners. You know, they were also testing. Uh, they were also testing the effects of radiation uh, on on so-called black cancer patients. I mean, the, the list goes on and on, man. I think it was. Uh, I'm trying to remember the name of it. Was it was it Agent Orange? One of those type, one of those experiments. But you know what? You brothers could look it up for yourself. I just wanted to uh, to highlight what was done here to uh, 
Miss Henrietta Lacks and uh, the fact that they basically they were lucky to find a uh, a cell structure that 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 adapted and adapted to what was done to it in that way. Really, she had a super cell structure, and Lord knows how many so-called black people they injected with cancer to to just find her. All right, allegedly. But anyway, peace.